So now for the last part of our uh, demonstration on design and professional practice, we're going to get into how to actually structure and clean up our code. It's very important to realize that um, when you're working in the professional world, rarely will you ever actually be working alone. Almost always you'll be working as part of a team. And if you're not working as part of a team, in the very least, you're at some point going to need to demonstrate your code or somebody's going to see your code and need to understand what's going on. You're not always going to be with the company. A new employee might come in. The point is, is that other people need to be able to read and understand your code. So it's important to make sure that your code is clean, structured, and clearly understandable. More importantly, we can define all these three things together as readability. We want our program to be as easily understandable at a glance. So if somebody just quickly looks at the program, they have a good general idea of what's going on. This can be achieved in a lot of different ways, but we're going to focus on a few today. The first way is structure. It's all about putting your code in the correct location. We define our variables together. Uh, we put our logic together. We put our final feedback together. Uh, we create these kind of groupings of related sequential code. So like all of our variables are defined together at the top of our code blocks and our constants are defined above there. And we separate these things and it's not unlike when you write an essay. When you write an essay, if you were to look at an essay and it was just this one giant block of text, it would be completely unreadable and very intimidating. Most people would just say, no, I'm not going to do this. I'm not wasting my time. I don't have time to figure out what's going on here. And that's why we use paragraphs. Paragraphs help us break up our ideas and it creates this sense of space and almost like checkpoints for the user for, or for the reader to say okay I know exactly how far I need to go to get to the next point of information so it gives them a little bit more confidence when they go into reading this well when you write your code it's really the same thing but instead of instead of paragraphs we break up our code into what's called code blocks and a code block is just a sequential set of related code it could be one line of code it could be 30 lines of code um, and that code block all the all the lines in code should be working towards one single goal. Maybe that's to get input from the user. Maybe that's to calculate the area of a circle. Maybe that's to calculate how much money you make um, after you factor in all your taxes and everything like that. It depends on what your program is, right? But the code must be sequential, so it must be in order, and it must be related. Okay, so don't overdo it. There should not be um, separate lines for every little piece. Group what you can organize things but remember our programs must flow from top to bottom so the ordering you can't just start throwing code willy-nilly around just because you think that it's related to something else because that will break the logic of your program so structure is the main thing breaking our code up into code blocks so the next thing we look at is something called white space that's exactly what it sounds like white space is that space in between our code blocks it helps break apart the program into much more readable form. So you see on the, and even in the table over here, I do exactly that. I create white space, I create this white space in between the different chunks of information so it's easily to understand. As soon as I take away those, the that little bit of white space, it all of a sudden becomes a lot less readable just by taking away two blank lines. So keeping them, keeping them there is really helpful to the reader to break apart the important information. Now, white space in our programs comes in a variety of forms. The number one is breaking up our code blocks, putting one, one blank line in between each code block so we know that that separates it, just like we do our paragraphs in our essays. The second form of white space comes in the form of indentation. So that slight indentation that we see in our programs to kind of uh, show the ownership or the dependability. So anything that's indented from an outer block is dependent on that outer block. So for example, when we're looking at our programs and we look at the main code, the main block of code, everything inside the squiggly brackets of that main block is indented to show that it will not execute unless that main block of code is executing. It shows ownership. So the indentation helps us break apart ownership. The blank lines help us break apart separate ideas, so separate code blocks. And then finally we get into the idea of documentation. And documentation is um, simply using English comments to describe what is going on in a given block of code. That's it. 
That's all it is. As short and as concise as possible. No fluff. Um, you should never be more than one or two sentences, even less if possible. Uh, your code itself, as long as you're using proper variables, is usually self-documenting to a degree. Like it kind of, we use good variable names so everything is clear and understandable. Now that being said, um, sometimes the code is so complex, depending on what we're doing in there, it can still require some further clarification. So the general rule we're going to use in our in our course is that for every code block you create, there should be one comment that describes what the purpose of that code block is. So for example, if you had a whole bunch of um, calculations done uh, to calculate the, I don't know, the class average in a classroom, such as our example here, um, I might have a code block above both of these lines, if these were two lines of code, that clearly stated um, that these two lines are working towards calculating the average of the class by uh, summing up the marks and dividing them by the, the quantity of marks. So I know what I'm doing and I know how I'm doing it. Okay, so be clear, be concise, uh, no fluff. The second form of uh, comments that we use in our program and probably the first thing you're going to see in your program and definitely the first thing you're going to see in your program is something called a header. So at the very top of your program, normally we have like our import lines and everything like that. This is going to take the place of those lines as being the number one thing in the program. It will be the first thing that the user sees. So um, in order to, in order to do this, we're going to we're going to need six pieces of information that describe to the reader, sorry, not the user, to the reader exactly what's going on in this project that you're looking at. So we're going to have six pieces of information. The first thing is the author. Who wrote the code? So for me, maybe it's Mr. Lin. Next thing is the file name. What is the name of the file you are currently working? It might be something like main.java. Um, if you're working in C Sharp, it might be something like uh, program.cs or uh, uh, form1.cs depending on the type of program or what language you're working in. After file name is project name. What did you call the project when you first created it? That's it. What did you call the project when you first created it? Um, maybe for this one, maybe it was called, um, I don't know, documentation demo, doc demo, something like that. There's no .jav or .cs or anything like that. Just what did you call the project when you first created it? For C Sharp and whatnot, you'll, that'll be the same thing that's on your namespace line. Uh, following that, we have our creation date. What date did you first create this file? Who knows what it is. In this case, maybe it's September 25th, 2016. And when is the last time you modified this file? It might be the same date. September 25th. 2016. And the purpose of that is to know how, how uh, frequently the file is being updated and when the last time it was updated. And then finally, a description. What is the purpose of this file in your program? Now, if there's only one file in your program and it's just main.jav or program.cs, basically you're telling me what the program does. right? So it might be like um, uh, use to uh, calculate Oops. the area and circumference of a circle, or sorry, of a circle with given radius data. Or we could even change this with user entered radius data. Now that's just an example. We don't know what that actually is. Or, or what it is, I'm just making this up right now. Depends on what your program is doing. But that description should be short, concise, and tell exactly what's going on. It shouldn't be too long and verbose or anything like that. So let's give it a go. This is basically what we know so far. Actually, I should mention one more thing. We're technically writing English in our programs. And if you were to just start writing in your program, what you're going to see is that the, the compiler is going to complain. Because it's going to try and treat each one of these words like a keyword in the language, in the dictionary. And these words don't exist in the dictionary. So it's going to say, sorry, I don't have anything that matches that, and it won't compile at all. 
So we need to get the compiler to effectively ignore our comments. And we can do this in two ways. The first way is a single line comment operator. Just a double slash, double forward slash. And as, yeah, double forward slash. Um, and that works for all the lines, so you can do it for each one. So basically, when, we, when the compiler sees this uh, little operator on a line, it ignores everything following that slash slash on the same line. Now, that works for our a header, but it also works for all your comments above your code. So, for example, if you had code that said like something like um, sum is equal to mark 1 plus mark 2 plus mark three and then below that you had average is equal to oops average is equal to uh, sum divided by num marks oops right above here is where you would make your comment and it would be one quick comment that describes the purpose of that whole code block even if there's 10 lines of code I don't want to know what each line of code does I want to know what the purpose of the general purpose of that code block is and above that little line, there should be a blank line that separates it from the code block previous.